I just start by acknowledging we're on the land of the Wurundjeri people? I'm from England, and uh, one of the things about being in this extraordinary country is just uh, you know, coming to terms with our past in a way that uh, makes us feel at home. And I certainly feel at home here. Um, so I think the, I'm going to talk about being a social entrepreneur. I, I think I'm a serial entrepreneur, eating it every morning. Um, and, uh, but, but particularly in the social field, I grew up uh, in, a, in a family business that was... Uh, on the south coast of England, doing lots and lots of hotels, discotheques, it was the 1970s and 80s, and um, uh, betting shops, casinos, all that kind of stuff. And, um, and I, I realised, and then I was a stockbroker, and then thought that was something missing for me in my life. And I, I started this whole other journey, working in not-for-profits with homeless people. I got ordained as an Anglican priest, trying to make sense of you know how to be really happy with who I am, how to love and be loved, how to love and be loved, you know, and be, get good at it. Not do what my dad wanted, not do what my mum wanted, not try and prove to my granddad that I was going to be as good as my dad. You know, just actually to love and be loved, to be Nick. And it's been a lifelong journey, and I'm still in it. And sometimes I'm good at it, and sometimes I'm not. You know, sometimes I'm wishing I was somebody else, quicker, sooner, better, and you know, richer and happier and better known, whatever that is. But on the whole, um, I think I've learned something, and that uh, and it's, I think it's because I've been in that space of being a social entrepreneur. It's allowed me to say, the reason I get up every morning is about my purpose. And my purpose in getting up every morning is, in the case of Cool Energy at the moment, and has been for the last six years, is to do mass energy efficiency campaigns around the world that radically reduce the amount of CO2 emissions. So mass energy efficiency campaigns that radically reduce the amount of CO2. So lots of things have come to the company over the last eight years, but lots of them have not been mass or radically changing CO2 emissions. And so one of the things is, and, and, one of the, and we put in a second component to our, our, our purpose, which is, and to do that with those who are most poor, it was a really easy thing to add, because if you can do anything that's a mass, it's actually going to be mostly about poor, because the mass of the world is poor. But it was interesting to have that focus in our purpose. Now one of the things about running a social enterprise, particularly after doing 20 years of being in the not-for-profit sector in charities, you know, running the Brotherhood, um, as I said in the UK with homeless people, is to actually have a company that said, and so one of the things that we are going to take for granted every single day is that that is going to be hugely profitable. It's going to be hugely profitable because to do anything mass, I've just bought 23 million light globes. It's the largest amount of light globes ever delivered into one project ever. Truckloads from here to Bendigo trucks, three boats from China to deliver them. And you know, if you're going to buy 50 million dollars worth of light globes, it has got to be profitable because somebody's got to lend you the 50 million. And they're only going to lend it if you've got an, you know, an internal rate of return over 25%. So I don't get up in the morning thinking, I'm going to make money in this business. I get up every morning. The decisions that are made in our company are, is this going to radically transform CO2 emissions globally? It's a great way to go to work. And of course, one of the questions is, is everyone going to be safe? Is it going to make a return on its investment of 30%? Because otherwise we won't get debt and we can't go to scale and we can't do it in other countries. All those things are taken as red. We do talk about purpose a lot, but I think it's really worth thinking about not adding purpose after you've gone to work to make money, but living from purpose. So it's a for me, it's been a more comfortable space. So I'll tell you a little bit about the enterprise or what we've just re uh, achieved, because we actually just finished one program in Mexico. We've changed 23 million lights of the poorest families in Mexico. So about 7 million families came along with their four incandescent lights. They gave it to us, and we gave them back four energy-efficient lights. That saves the Mexico the, the need for building either a big hydro dam or two nuclear power stations. So it saves that investment. It reduced CO2 emissions by 6 million tonnes over the next seven years. That's like all the cars in Australia are off the road for a year. It actually saved each individual in the house one month's salary every year. Now, aggregated, that's 300 million. And because they're so poor, the Mexican government, out of treasury, paid the other 50%, another 300 million. So $300 million saved in buying energy for the government and 300 million from poor people, straight into their hands. No charity. No, can I do something? Or what are you going to spend with that money? If you want to go and get pissed, you want to bury your grandma, or you want to pay for education for your kids, you do what you like. You've just saved a month's salary, and you're cutting emissions. Now, 
300, 600 million dollars a year for about eight years, because that's how long the lights last. Last year, in um, the US gave as aid to the Mexican government 30 million dollars. That was their biggest aid receipt. 600 million as a carbon energy, efficiency, pro energy efficiency project that saved hundreds of millions of dollars a year. Pure business. I could ne after 25 years of being in charity, there is nothing that I've ever done that has come even close to it. But one of the things that I learned about being in charity, caring for people, and then coming to business is that what are, you, you actually, the way government plays with you, the way that you play with government is crucially important. So we invested $5 million over the time of doing this project to change the United Nations rules on how you create carbon credits. And we created the first ever carbon credits on energy efficiency. Normally carbon credits that you buy from developing countries come from big stacks, you know, there's a big plant and it's churning out CO2 and they stick something on the top and they take the CO2 out and a little meter goes round and you create carbon credits. Of course, it's really difficult if you just put four lights in a home. It's only going to create two tons of carbon over four years. It's really hard to quantify that and manage that. So one of the things that we've done is show you how to do that. First, first company in the world, and we, I'm just going to England next week to finalise the deal to sell six million tons of UN-registered CO2 emissions to Standard Bank. Because we changed the technology, because we are now the only company in the world that has created energy efficiency in poor people's home for a UN accredited carbon credit, we are now managing the largest portfolio of carbon, uh, carb carbon creation in the world for Standard Bank in Africa. So we're now working on these cute, cute kind of really great quirky, great technology, small little wind farms for villages, uh, little um, cook stoves or lights that sit in a, in, a, in, in, a, in a hut's roof and, you know, it's extraordinary technologies thought up by extraordinary entrepreneurs that we now manage the carbon component that means that you can give them away free in Africa. A completely different way of thinking about how to make a contribution and how to be in the world. Now, some people say you know, but we're just playing in the market and the market's not a very nice place, it doesn't care. Well, I, I actually, I tend to agree. I don't like what my kids see on television, I don't like what I see on television, I don't like the, some of the behaviours I get caught up in. But it's the way it is. And so we either play in the way it is and we make our contribution and we do it well and with meaning and with passion, or we sit back and we complain that it should be different. Well, it's the way it is. And how we play in it is really important. So I think the thing for me and the thing that I'd like to leave you with is whether you're in a large corporate or you're in business or you're starting your own business or you're, you know, you're just thinking about how to play in the world, is that it's getting more complicated. You know, in business soon all the externalities are going to be priced. You're going to be paying for carbon, you're going to be paying for your pollution, you're going to be paying for water, you're going to be paying the cost of making people unemployed. We're going to see the world radically change. Australia will run out of resources one day or they won't be need, needed because the price of carbon is so great. We will see climate change changing the environment we're living in. We may see Europe broken up. We may see a completely different shift in terms of power globally. All of that will probably happen in the next 20 or 30 years and it is going to be extraordinarily interesting. Extraordinarily interesting. I didn't say great. <laughs> How you play in it is really important. Are you ready to play differently? Are you ready and capable to make the good decisions that will allow you to say, I can't do this because it's frightening? Are we living with fear or are we living with something that said it's going to change and it's going to change every day? And are we, are we empowering the people we love and that we care for and the people we work with to get good at that change? Because it's coming. And the best of us that live with it and experience it and at some level enjoy it because we're not frightened of it. So, good luck. Enjoy the change. It's definitely coming.